I'll tell you, there's nothing better than coaching Special Olympics floor hockey. Uh, I get up for the game just like I'm playing the game. So make sure you line yourself up so you can get that puck and just one time it right away. It's such a competitive sport, but it's a good competitive. It's about playing fair, good, clean competition, and I just really get pumped up for it, for the games. In regards to practicing with your athletes, make it fun, make it simple, make it challenging, so they're gonna keep coming back. And teach them that this is a team game. At the end of the day, floor hockey is a team game. One, two, three. Floor! Okay guys, we're gonna work on our stick handling today. I've been doing it for about a dozen years, and we try to um, keep it uh, upbeat and fast. We believe that we need a lot of repetition. So we'll do the same drills regularly, and uh, we may start at a basic level and then add another component as we move through. But we'll, we'll usually do the same drills over and over again for many weeks. Um, I really find that the repetition and very simple instruction uh, helps our players. The stick handling, um, especially in floor hockey, because what you'll find in different tournaments or games that the, the size of the floor will be varied. And you could be playing on a, in a hockey rink or you could be playing in a small gym. So the stick handling skill is, is very important, especially when you get in a crowded area. We spend a lot of time with stick handling, and especially in, ga in game situations. We like to always have them thinking about that they're in a game situation, that we can take a drill and then move it into a, to a game. Okay, one of the things we want to remind you with this drill is you've got to be in game, game ready, okay? So we're going to just show you with Dan here. Don't keep your, your feet solid and stuck. Okay, bend your knees so the puck goes in and out. We move our body, okay? We're going to keep our head up, know where we're going to go. We call this the Patrick Kane drill um, off of a, a YouTube video that we saw Patrick Kane do uh, a little while ago where he had, you know, he probably had 100 pucks on the ice and, and he uh, stick handled through all these pucks. So we've just uh, taken a basic level of that and we set up three pylons and uh, we have the guys just stick handle the, pu the puck through these three pylons. So what we like to do is tell them that use, use their imagination, use their, their body so they don't have to stand in one little spot and they always, they always don't have to take the same path with the puck. So to use it as if, and think about if they're playing a game, they're coming down on a player and how they're going to move the puck. It's very key for stick handling to move forward, you know, in the offensive zone. And so when you see this today in, 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 um, in our practices and our drills, you'll see how our guys do it very well. It's because we practice it over and over and over again. Good. Good. We're always looking to try and challenge our players, and I think that's key as coaches, that we're, we just don't make drills easy, but we make them so they're, they're easy that they get them, but we're challenging them to progress and move to another level. Go. Lots of times the players don't feel the puck enough. In a game, they might not touch the puck a lot. All the drills we do, we like to see them use the puck virtually every drill. Go. Three shifts to go! And we're world champs. Three shifts. Let's go. Guys. Now let's go. When we get into a game situation, we can we can see the the, the fruits of, of what we practice, and and we can see that that when they're in a, a tight situation, either trying to dig the puck out of the corner or in front of the net, it's usually a crowd. It's a small it's a small floor in most cases, and we can see how they can move the puck in and out away from players and keep the and really protect the puck. We talk a lot about puck possession, so we want our players to maintain the puck and keep the puck as, as long as they can. Okay, we're going to work on another stick handling drill this time. This time it's a little more game action because you're going to have to go around a defenseman. Second stick handling drill is, is a little bit more game action and they're actually going to be facing an opponent. So we, we line up uh, uh, three or four players in a line and we have a player stick handle through, the, through them. They weave in and out of the players. The players that's playing defense cannot move their feet. So it's a passive defensive drill. They can use their stick. So now they're in a little more game situation where they have to go in and out of players, protect the puck away from that player, and, and stick handle through. And then we move each person along the line so that everybody is involved, so that it's, it's, it's a flow. It's, it's, we try to keep them going. We try to make them think. Some guys will spin around and, and move the puck, but it's keeping the puck away from that, that defensive person. 
we don't let them go too far outside. We want them to be fairly tight, um, as if it's in a you know it's a crowded gym floor. Okay, so one of the things we want to work on, uh, we try to do this with every drill that has a left and right. We want to work on a dominant side and a non-dominant side, as each person has a stronger left or right. So we'll take the drill from one side of the floor and move it to the other side of the floor. And so we'll see, be able to see that some guys are better on their backhand or on the forehand. So they'll have, be able to practice going left, right, whatever they're strongest with, forehand or backhand shot. I've been involved for over 20 years. Practices are very uh, demanding. Like, I mean, we, we try to get a practice in every Thursday with the guys that we have here. Uh, we, we also have games with uh, Sean's uh, ball club once in a while when he can bring them in and we get a good workout from them. Well, you have to have a good coach in order to get you to the places you are today. Like I know Paul's, I've been under Paul for over 20 years and his record speaks for himself. He's a tough coach and if it wasn't for him, then uh, I don't think we would have got to where we were today. Let's not forget why we practice so hard, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, in the oath, let me win. Let me win. And if I cannot win, I cannot win. win. let me be brave in the attempt. Let me be brave in the attempt. It's just a really good feeling coming in, uh, practicing, winning games, losing games. Like you learn a lot losing games as, as a coach and as an individual. I, I, I learn a lot from that and I learn a lot from my athletes. You know, the old saying, you know, you, 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 got, you got to try, you know, and our athletes are always trying and they make me a better person. Um, I could speak about Special Olympics all day long and how, how rewarding it is. Steven Slesner.